This podcast is brought to you by Body Armor. Drinkbodyarmor.com. Get your edge. Introducing Body Armor Edge. Sports hydration with the boost of caffeine. Here comes John Moran. Dribbles up into some full court pressure. He's quick. Judges forward by the defense. Going coast to coast. One man to beat. And it's the big man. John leaps up. With 100 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of electrolytes, there's no better way for John Morant to get his edge. It's more than a sports drink. It's Body Armor Edge. You're listening to EPPN's Today with DW. Welcome, everybody. Everybody? Wow, I'm already tongue-tied two seconds into the show. Welcome, everybody, to the Friday night edition. Today with the DW is the pop culture edition with my good friend, Mr. Lewis Perry from the Angry Geek Show. How are you, sir? I can't hear you, Lewis. What's going on? What'd you do? I had the mic muted. <laughs> I was... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a newbie mistake. I was just yeah, sharing right? it because usually we play the body armor stuff and everything. I, I, I did. Was, oh, there there was the, I did play the body armor. The body armor. I didn't see right the there. video. <laughs> I didn't see it. I was like, this. Maybe I fell asleep or something. Wow. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Timmy? Thank you for joining us. You are always the first one to pop on. Thank you so much for popping on every episode, Timmy. What's going on? A couple on, of weeks. Uh, I had no voice last yes. week. I, I I have yet to put a full weekend in a month. It's pissing me off. <laughs> so, really? Dude, uh, I, I got <laughs> – I don't know if you've seen, but out in Colorado, there's um the guy named Mark May. He's an artist. He goes to yeah, a I'm lot of ARE events. Yeah, yeah he with goes, him. hey, I got roped into doing stuff with him. And so now it's like – because of Colorado and the – um. The time difference, I'm all screwed yeah. up. I don't, yeah. I'm like half dead on this show. Hey, do the macho man voice. Yes, uh, three, hey, hours three hours difference. Yeah, hey, brother. I gotta Ooh, go. We got back. a slight echo coming through, my friend. Oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, uh, I, there's a little bit of a delay. No, now it's gone. Is that better? Yeah, it should be okay. fine. I was coming yep. through a little bit. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Yeah. So but, with uh, the delay, I'm like, oh, if Thursday so, night I'm on with Mark May, crazy. That, well, that and well, the studio's picking up too. That's becoming the problem. I got three yes. new shows coming out. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I, I seen, I so, seen. Yeah, I'm gonna be out. Uh, hey, I gotta do a quick shout out before we get into the format. On yeah, uh, May May 22nd, I will be at Alternate Universe LLC in Milford, Connecticut. We're Sweet. doing this huge, you know, huge event there. Go to their Instagram page. Go to their Facebook page. Enter the contest because I will be announcing the See, winner of that contest. You, you don't trust the host of the show to know that when we do the Friday five brought to you by. Well, wait a minute. I already, minute. Had, I already had that already planned. I had that already planned I, for you. <laughs> well, there's something else. There's more. Well, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get and, to it. We'll get okay. To it. All right. I'm just excited. Let's not, let's not, let's not blow our load all in the beginning of the show here. Let's let's, you this know, keep, huge, keep things this going. Huge news. Huge yes, news. Huge so, news. so we haven't okay. talked in a few weeks, which seems to be our, our format here. Um, we did talk a little bit about the Falcon, the winter soldier, I think was one of probably one of the, I got to say, you know what I granted I'm starting to like the series more than the movies for the fact that we get to really connect with the characters for an hour a week for six to eight weeks at a time instead of two hours. I think Marvel finally might start to be start beating CW or DC on the small screen. I think they finally, because of where they have their own streaming app. I mean, obviously the CW and agents of shields on ABC, I didn't think was a great series. I thought it was kind of lack luck at best. The last season was pretty good, but CW has really been knocking it out of the park. But now with Disney, obviously you have movie movie budgets for tv shows you're spending the money because you're still getting anthony mackie you're still getting sebastian stain all the big guys in the big screen they're really pushing these series and we also know still now we uh we, we were told uh, a few months ago that black widow was just going to be in theaters but within two weeks they said nope we're going to release it at the same time streaming because Godzilla did so well. Whether you love Godzilla or not, we're not going to get into that anymore, but it did so well streaming at the same time. So they're doing that. Disney, I think, is planning that, hey, 
even if COVID lifts, I think people are going to stay home. I think we're, we're going to put in some major production to these things, even though they'll still do movies, but I really think they're going to be focusing on series and the benefit, you know, the downside is ticket sales compared to subscription service. You want to pay 11 to $12 per ticket and, and make $5 million. Or do you want the, the $12.99 a month subscription? That's going to be the hard part to see where they're going to get their money from because there's no advertising. There's no commercial breaks like you see on Hulu or you see on other, on other streaming services. So that's going to be difficult. I think for them to recoup their money, um, and, you know, I think they, I think they're one of the services that stop their free trial because I know when I do a free trial, I get on, like I, I use stars, I'll get on stars for the seven days, binge watch all of American gods. And then go on the sixth day, go click, cancel my seven day free trial and I don't pay. So they're mm-hmm. smart into canceling that going, well, if you want it, you're going to have to pay for it. I, uh, I, I think that streaming and home streaming is going to be a place to go. I mean, a lot of theaters mm-hmm. are already closing down. Okay. Yeah. There are theaters that are closing down. They're making their money. Vulcan and the Winter Soldier in the Nielsen ratings for streaming is number one yet again. And the series has yeah. been done for two weeks already. I, I think that it that's the way it's going to go. HBO is doing the same thing. Right. HBO Max slash Warner. It's, that is the way it's going to be. TV, big, big ass TVs, you know, 70 inch TVs or more. They're not as expensive as they used to be. You can go down to Wally World and pick one up. You can go to Target and pick one up. Under a thousand dollars. You can get yeah, one for like seven, eight hundred dollars. Yeah, well, well, penny. Yeah, you, you can say pennies. So yeah. that is the way to go. And then for the surround sounds, those used to be a gazillion dollars. Again, a yeah. hundred bucks. Yeah. I mean, we so talked about this. Building. I think we talked yeah. about this a couple of weeks ago that oh. for about two thousand dollars. You could set up your own home theater. I mean, really, the 65, 75-inch TV, the surround sound, you're in your comfy chair. You can push, pause, take a piss, (laughs) grab, make some food, and the popcorn doesn't cost you $9 a bucket. (laughs) No, it costs you $0.10 a bag because you're buying the Jiffy Pop popcorn down in the box. Exactly. And on top of that, on top of that, a lot of TVs are coming Today, like we do, we just got a brand new 70 inch back in mm-hmm. March for WrestleMania. That TV came pre installed yeah. with Roku, with yeah. Hulu, with mm-hmm. Disney Plus. All you have to do is sign into your account yeah. and, and Amazon Prime. There you yeah. go. I mean, yeah. it's it's a no brainer. I think the studios are seeing this, and a lot of the theaters are, are already closed, going under. Yeah. Regal so, Cinemas uh, filed Chapter 11 in the United States and closed 150, 150 of their theaters. AMC was is trying to stay on. Uh, Alamo is trying to stay on. Um, what is the other one? Um, Cinemark. Matt. Cinemark closed a whole yeah. bunch of theaters yeah. around yeah. here. We only have one that's open. So, Two. you know, Two. it's going to change the game. It's definitely going to change the game for sure. Uh, and as we segue oh, yeah. into the our first uh, topic today, as we are talking streaming, since we are talking about a a two thumbs up for uh, a Falcon and winter soldier. I'm going to have to say that I am not giving this a thumbs up, not even a fingernail Jupiter's legacy, which started Ooh. on Amazon prime. Uh, was it? Yeah. Amazon prime. I, I, I now all my streaming no, services. No, no, Jupiter's Netflix. Legacy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Netflix. Excuse me. Netflix. I, I get all my Netflix. streaming services all mixed up. Netflix. I apologize. Uh, mm-hmm. Mark Miller way back before COVID. Uh, when Netflix started making these big deals, I want to say it was at least two years ago, if maybe a little bit longer, Miller's world, his comic books have always been questioned. Uh, he's been acclaimed for doing some great stuff. And uh, it, it, he's the kind of uh, creator, you either love him or hate him. There's no in between. You either really like him a lot or you just hate what he puts out. Um, he signed probably at that time, we're talking, uh, what's this, 2021, we're talking 2019, possibly mid-2018, signed one of the biggest comic creator deals with Netflix with multiple, uh, his creations, what he calls Miller World, to be exclusive to Netflix. And obviously the first one that just came out uh, last week was a Jupiter, or two weeks ago, Jupiter's um, Legacy. Legacy. I was excited to, for it because I, I I do like Miller's work and I never read the comic book. Uh, but you know, the first two episodes now, Lewis has only gotten into two episodes, but he's not too concerned about some spoilers. So we're just going to get right into it. Not at all. After a while, it just was stagnant. It's old. It's non, it's not original. And we'll talk about that part as well, because when the comic book came out compared to some of the other ones, 
to give you an idea, uh, Jupiter's Legacy superhero streaming television series uh, developed by Stephen D uh, S. DeKnight, based on the Image comic series by Mark Miller, as I said, and Frank Quayley, that premiered on May 7th. Stars Josh Demal, who I love Josh. I love him. He's been in the Transformer movies. I, I love him as an actor. I think he's great. He is the uh, utopian. He is the, the star or the main. He is the Superman. The strongest. Or, or the hyperon, hyperon of, of the super group. Uh, or mm -hmm. uh, if you're familiar with Invincible, it's going to be uh, Omni-Man. Um, Omni and uh, shortly after, so the basic premise for this is shortly after his father's suicide in 1929, triggered by Black Tuesday, former businessman Sheldon Sampson travels to an uncharted island in the Atlantic Ocean where he, his brother, Walter, and four others receive superpowers. When they, he then creates a superhero team in his and his guiding ideals, never kill anyone, never interfere in political matters, remain unchanged over the near century of his adventures as the utopian. However, the next generation of superheroes, including his children, struggle to live up to his rigid ideals and high expectations. When Sheldon's son, Brandon, seemingly become, kills one of their greatest foes, it ignites a public debate over whether the ideals are relevant. Before I get into when Mark Miller's book came out as a comic book, and we'll talk about some similarities, right off the bat, uh, even the, the premise is a little bit different, but if you start watching the first two episodes, and if you've watched The Boys... You're going to be like, wow, this is like a shoddy remake. Uh, the premise yep. is kind of the same. He's a having his ideals where the boys, they're superheroes. There are no ideals. They're they're a bunch of dirtbags. <laughs> you know, they're they're just free reigning it and just going all they're, over the place and breaking about all the, the rules. Yes, about they care the about the money, yeah. the fame, the fortune. Where he's doing it, where Sheldon or Utopia is like, no, we're not going to kill. Now he has obviously lived since 1929. He doesn't age. He ages slower. Um, the costumes very similar to the boys, a little bit cheapy or ish, you know, cheeky ish. Um, but the premise seems outdated at this point. And you know, Lewis and I were talking off pod that would my opinion of this show like I. People have asked me about DWs and you know, if you listen to the show or if you follow me on my Facebook page, I, I rate, rate shows by DWs one out of 10, five out of 10. I was asked to give, what would you get? How many DWs do you give the show? I can't even give you a, a score on this. I just don't deserve, I don't Whoa. think it deserves a score. I, I mean, Whoa. it's not a zero. It's just, I don't think it deserves a score at this point. I enjoyed the first two episodes. But the story just dragged and dragged. And I apologize. It's been out since May 7th. So, you know, spoilers, you can turn this off. You know, the present. So basically what happens is in this show, you go back from present day to flashback to 1929 to figure out why he's searching for or how he got his powers back and forth. Uh, the, it's weird because some people say the present day was amazing. The flashbacks were bad. I kind of feel just the opposite. The present day was too much like the boys, too much like Invincible. The flashback was a little drawn out, a little bit too crazy for a, a little bit. I should not say crazy, but a little bit too drawn out. But I was more entertained about how he got these powers and not worrying about the struggles of, oh, we can't kill anybody. Oh, you shouldn't do this. Oh, it's politics. I, I saw that already in the boys. It's a different take, mm -hmm. but still the similar thing. Um, so... Uh, before we get Lewis's take, because I know he's only watched the first couple episodes, to give you an idea, uh, Miller's book came out in 2013, and it did very well. It was very well uh, received. Now, The Boys came out in 2006, and this was written by Garth Ennis and artist Derek Robertson. The series was definitely uh, uh, acclaimed. It was edgy. It was, you know... I feel Mark Miller's where Miller's was a detune or softer core, softer core. How funny I said that uh, core yeah. version of the boys. You know, and, and with the boys, a series was initially published by Wallace Storm Productions as an imprint in DC Comics until the sixth issue. Then it had problems in canceling the rights of the story. And then it went through dy dynamite and started again. So the, the boys is definitely, definitely a, a, a comic book that people, that fans have love. What's going on, Mr. Little? How are you, sir? Um, so I know Marx came out later, but it just seems like he ripped off <laughs> the boys in his own way. It's not, this is not Miller's world. This is Miller's taking somebody else's world and putting it in his universe kind of thing. I, what, what's your take, Lewis? I mean, I know you watched I, the first two episodes, but you're somewhat familiar. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, first, 
I, I watched the first episode and I'm sitting there, you know, um, cause it, it just happened to be after the day I got my, my second, you know, vaccination shot. So yeah. I was like out of it. I was loopy and I'm sitting on the couch and I'm watching it. You could gauge a lot of superhero shows by my wife. I mean, you know, Rose, she, mm -hmm. if it doesn't hold her, you know, she's totally opposite of me. She's into the sports ball and all that crap. I'm sitting down there and, 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 in the geek layer and i'm watching watching jupiter's legacy she sat down watched the first episode with me after it was done she looked at me and she said that was great mm -hmm. yep all right i start watching the second episode but she had to go out so i said all right i'll stop so we have plans to continue watching i can gauge a lot of our world by if rose likes it or not Right. Invincible. She she like, oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. So we watch it. The Bad Batch. It's right. cute. Okay. Yeah. So the, uh, the general public, let's say the general public, it, it, it appealed to her. So I think that it will be, you know, yes. Okay. She'll yeah. like it. Whereas Kick, that's another one of Miller's properties. She didn't mm -hmm. like. She didn't like the mm -hmm. first one or the second one. I enjoyed the I don't first blame one. Her. Oh, yes. I, I like the comic much better. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as the stories goes, I think with the flashback thing, Rose was more taken to Arrow because that Arrow used to do that. I mean, how the many flashback, times? Yeah, the flashbacks. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So it, it's like with Arrow and the flashback, I think that appealed to her. Um, mm -hmm. After we're done, we eat dinner. I'll make a comment later on and find out which part she liked more. Did right, she like right. the future or did she like the fat flashback? I'll find out and you know we'll right. post it on the earplug okay. page. Yeah, definitely. myself. Go ahead. Okay, m m myself. Rose also watched uh, Invincible with me. And oh yeah, yeah. She was turned off at first mm -hmm. because while uh, Guardians of the Globe, what did they do? They they took. You know, the Justice League and Guardians of the Galaxy put them together. That's stupid. I think, that's the, I think that was the point, though. I think that was the I, point I with Kirkman doing that on purpose, you know. Yeah, and I I, I try to explain that to Rose, right, and I she know. goes, well, Invincible looks like Nightwing. Oh, yeah, kind of, especially yeah, since his name yeah. is Mark Grayson. So yeah, yeah. she was, like, really <laughs> yeah. picking. Yeah, she was picking that apart badly, but then she ended up watching it, and, and right. I liked it. She chuckled at a lot of the jokes. With Jupiter's legacy, she didn't really – pick any of that she goes oh okay right. well utopian is like superman yes yeah well there's a lot of similarities with a lot of these characters and she knows how right. I, everyone knows how i feel about right. superman but it's like she was getting it so i think she got that more now with the boys she did not watch the boys she heard mm -hmm. the boys in the background but she did not watch the boys she heard cody and i she heard you and i talk about it when you were right. on anger geeks with jamie and i yep so yep. She did not watch The Boys, so I'm thinking that maybe that had a little to do with why she likes Jupiter's Legacy. I'll, you, you know that. Oh, I, I can't wait. Very, to watch next very well, could don't be. watch it without me. Maybe that's Cause, why. Because I think sure. I, I kind of agree. If I didn't watch The Boys, and I didn't even mm -hmm. like the first season of The Boys because I when I never did no, the didn't. comics, I didn't like it at all. The second season, I did, I did really get into it. I mean, uh, the first two episodes of uh, uh, Jupiter's Legacy were good. Three was okay. Four started to everything now starts to be like, ah, this is really repetitive. There's not a lot of creativity here. Now we know it's not one of the best. I think it's number two now out of the 10. It never hit number one. It was number mm -hmm. 10 for the longest time. And when I'm saying that is the top 10 for Netflix as your picks, but that yeah, also yeah. changes per viewer. I've also noticed that is not straight around like if you go to your netflix number two might not be jupiter's legacy which is stupid i want to know what i mm. don't, don't don't make it just for me i want to know what everybody's doing if that's what it's supposed oh. to be that's what it should be you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah so I, I i totally agree about that so and it's not been getting good reviews now we both of us and some of our listeners can say critics are jerks and who gives a crap but this is mark this is miller's first for a in a multiple deal pro, a multiple property deal with Netflix this is not a great showing for him it's very lackluster at best this is not something that is huge you know that like this is amazing uh i probably will never even rewatch that epi that season i always like to rewatch some seasons i mean i've watched uh, uh, invincible uh, invincible just a couple episodes just to catch up and see oh i might have missed this or missed that uh I will never probably retouch this. Will I watch 
We don't know if there's a second season that has not been uh, confirmed yet. Uh, it, it's obviously there's a, it's definitely, there's a, there's an end to it all. And some of the scenes remind you of in- invincible on how it ends. It's just like, okay. wow, Miller, did you come up with anything original? You know, I, I don't know. I just, maybe again, if it, this came out before boys and came out before invincible, things might be different with my interpretation. Maybe we'd be like, oh, wow, the boys has copied Miller, but it's a little bit more graphic. Well, who knows? You know, timing is everything. We know this in the industry, whether it's comic books and movies, timing and storylines are everything. Mm-hmm. Another member of the, of the Angry Geeks household, um, he didn't want my, my, my son. He didn't want to watch uh, Jupiter's Legacy because he said, I don't want to watch old superheroes. Okay. 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 Yeah, and that's right. exactly what he said. He goes, I'm looking at that. All it is is, you know, old superhero. I don't want to mm-hmm. see it. I, I So I'm like, whoa, I was kind of taken back. And I'm like, well, I watched the first episode. I said, Cody, maybe, maybe you should sit down and watch it. And he goes, no, it's not appealing to me. Okay. So would he, so fair, wait, fair so, so Lewis, would he say if Kingdom Come came out and all the no, old superheroes? <laughs> no, because he, he has, he's like me. Um, certain books. Well, they're they're old superheroes too, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But to him, to him, they're not. Now I he's like me. He'll buy the same book over and over and over yeah. again just to have them, right? And he has four complete, four or five, I think, complete sets of Kingdom Come. Oh, and he awesome, knows the story awesome storyline. Oh yes, awesome. but see, I I think way he looks at Kingdom Come is. Okay, those heroes, which are all you know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, you know, yeah, yeah. they aged, they aged with him, so he I understood yeah, that. Yeah. Whereas Jupiter's Legacy, you're just showing up with old superheroes. Well, that's, I mean, you're not connecting with the viewer or the reader. And, exactly, and that's pretty much what it is. It's not connecting exactly. with the viewer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, Whereas sense. the Dark Knight Returns, he connected. Oh, I know Batman. Oh, it's an older version of Batman. That's right. right. I'm already connected. Right. Same thing with what Kingdom Come. He's already connected. Old Man Logan. He's already connected. Whereas so, this, there was right. a disconnect there, and Correct. that that could be part of the problem. There is a huge disconnect between the fans and the product. They need to fix it. So this leads into what we were talking about just a little bit off pod is are we getting into superhero fatigue, meaning the fact of uh, Miller did not do very well. The characters were not, I guess, you know, as your son, even your son, who's big in the pop culture, just like the both mm-hmm. of us, he did not even care or want to connect with these characters. This could also be starting to happen with the general public when we're getting these new original or indie Image Comics was an indie. It's not really considered an indie anymore. Getting these new characters, these new stories, they're like, well, that kind of looks like Superman. Uh, that kind of looks like uh, Nightwing. That kind of looks like Batman. That's not what I want because DC and Marvel have been putting out movies for so many years that maybe the the original, obviously the boy, I you know, again, boys are an exception, un, un, invincible. Kirkman has got a big name behind him as well because he is a big name that people are starting to have a disconnect and that there's too much of it out there. I mean, right now we're going into we got uh, Black Widows coming out. We got uh, mm-hmm. what's 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 next? Uh, Loki's coming out with, with a mm-hmm. six or seven episode series. Then what if is coming out? I mean, we're getting inundated with superhero overload for you and I. Well, let's not forget. And then on the flip side, you got season three of the Doom Patrol, season three of. Right. Titans coming out plus yeah, right. season two of star girl. It's all coming right. out. So right. it's like, right. okay, it right. is a good time to be a superhero fan. And everyone is crying. I want something original. I want something original. I want something different. Here comes the independence out right. with Jupiter's legacy with invincible with, with the boys. Is it really original? Yes, it right. is. Yeah. But it's kind of like, like the I general public. Rose, well, because like the general public is going to base it on the characters they know. Correct. You know what I'm and saying? They're going to base happened. it on the Batman, the Superman, the Spider-Man characters. I think the, and it, it sucks because I've always, we've all, of, since day one, you and I have both with our independent shows and the network, we've always supported ind- independent creators. Oh, Joe Martino, yes. Dave Ryan, Chris Capanna, uh, Joe St. Pierre, yeah. all yeah, of them, all those, yes. Yes. all of those guys. But yeah. going into the movie realm, 
Now, Mark Miller, I mean, is he made a huge deal. I don't remember exactly how much. I'll have to research it again. It's a multi-property deal. This is not good. This, I think we're getting a superhero fatigue at this point. We like what we like, and that's it. There's no, let's give us something new. Uh, but okay, we did give you something new, but you just picked it apart. Now, I'm not picking it apart Jupiter's legacy because it reminds me of Superman or Batman because it doesn't because I'm familiar with that. I'm just tired of it because I didn't really care for it because it reminded me of the boys invincible and some other storylines that were like, this has been done before. This is not new. This is not refreshing. This is not a new take. It's just kind of a rehashing of an old story kind of thing. So yeah. I'm wondering because Netflix has put a lot of money in, in the comic book and pop culture franchises this past two years, and they are still, still beating Disney on the books. Their net worth is worth more than Disney at this point. I'm wondering if they're sitting back going, Hmm, Maybe we should rethink this because obviously they don't have the Marvel properties anymore, which gave them, they don't have the star Wars properties anymore that, which gave them a lot of subscribers and a lot of viewerships. I'm wondering if they're going to really start thinking about this going, Hmm, do we want to spend the money on more independent creator titles or should we try to go and get, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles making an original Netflix series? And I'm just throwing that out there. That did not happen, everybody. That's not news. <laughs> I don't want anybody going nuts going, we didn't break it here first. I'm just saying as a hypothesis. Or, you know, uh, Valiant tried to do their thing in the ring and that bombed bad with Vin Diesel. Uh, oh, oh, so, oh. yeah, I, I'm wondering what's going to happen. I know people want to have something different, but I, I think... I would be happy if there's no superhero movies for a year or two. Give my brain a rest. I, this is like this, Lewis, how I feel. When, when Star Wars came out, amazing, right? Obviously, we're, we were much younger then. We were much younger. Oh, yeah. But, we, but how many years did we have to wait until Empire Strikes Back? We, that was oh, as much as we hated four, waiting. Five. Uh, yeah, yeah. As, we, as much as we hated waiting, the anticipation and be like, oh my God. And then there was no internet. So you would go buy the the uh, fanzines. Time the, Magazine. The, yeah. Time Magazine. When yes. Empire Strikes Back, I, don't, I didn't mean to cut you off. When yeah, Time Magazine came, when, when, when Time Magazine came out, they had, it was on the front cover of Time Magazine. Yeah. Everything was in there. And I mean, people were going nuts no. for that. And that, I, I would remember the summer that that came out, not yeah. only did you have the Empire Thank Strikes you. Back, you also had Superman 2 at the time. It yeah. That was a great summer to be a kid. I was like, oh, my God, freaking well, yeah, out. Definitely. You, know? you know, when we buy so, the magazines, you buy the movie magazines, the sci-fi magazines, and catch up on that. And yeah. now, and yeah, it might be because I'm older, too. Uh, now it's Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, one after another every year. And I'm like... This is overload. I, and then I'm getting told I'm not a Star Wars fan. Oh, oh, yes, I am. I may not be as big as some other people, but I, as much as I hate waiting, I like the anticipation. I like waiting it out a little bit. Give us a breather. Give us a break. Don't pump this out one after another. We're going to do four Star Wars movies in four years. One, how about take the time to develop these stories take the time the extra two or three years to do some great writing or reconsider what you're doing don't pump them out for the sake of pumping them out granted if you're making you know when i say cash cow uh, of, of course it's a cash cow if you weren't making movies to not make money then you wouldn't be making movies but what i'm saying is they're pumping names out so quick because i think in their back of their head they're going maybe we will maybe this bubble will burst in a, in three or four years so we'll just pump it out it wouldn't burst if you slow down the damn process and made us wait an extra two or three years, I know people are like, Oh, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait immediate gratification. I don't care. I mm -hmm. think they should slow down, span this out, span it out. You know what you want to, you want to give us. And if movie theaters are still around and, and I'm, I'm sure they will be, uh, that my prediction is Marvel's going to start slowing down their big screen process and give us the series. So instead of three a year, we're going to go maybe one or two, a year and then it would be every other year or every two years before you see the next two or the next three. And then we're going to focus in filling in the blanks between those years with a six episode series to give you some taste of what's going to happen and tie and use the DC Disney universe, Disney plus universe to tie in and meld all of their universes together in between like black widow. And then when their next movie comes out, when it was Thor and then tie everything in with the series and slow down major screen production. Mm -hmm. Well, do you feel that the superhero fatigue, let's call it superhero fatigue yeah. 
do you feel that that would not be in place if they used a property right or an original property that was not a carbon copy mm-hmm. of another property? Like Maybe. say 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 um like let's take the success of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. okay? All right. Then to say uh Warner HBO Max comes up and says we're going to do one just like that, but we're going to have Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Mm-hmm. Another Which buddy. was in development for a while. Yes. So that's mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. So l- let's say if they do that, it's going to be not the same thing, but it's going to be a buddy cop, you know, a buddy cop a buddy, type yeah. show, but it's going to be a if they go by the books, it's going to be freaking hilarious. If they mm-hmm. have Keith Giffen write it, you know, if they right, have right. The people who know the characters write it. So, do you think that fatigue would not be there if they brought out an original comic? Uh, say Spawn, for instance. Mm-hmm. Say if uh, Spawn's an exception, though. Spawn's okay. one of the exceptions to the rules too, because these really popular. Uh, I would, I would, well, I would right, almost another gamble. If I, I would almost gamble, gamble, Lewis. Hold on, if I would almost gamble. I could probably get more of the general public, not the comic book readers, that if I mentioned Spawn. I'd get more of them knowing who Spawn was before I'd say uh, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. So I would. Oh, probably. You know yeah, no, saying? no, you're you're right because because of the movie. You you think it's yeah, because yeah. of the movie? What Michael J. White? Okay, yeah. So let's let's throw another original character that hasn't really been original yeah. character, the Savage okay. Dragon. Do you oh, think yeah, that yeah. the fans? Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's throw to Eric Larson, the Savage Dragon. Let's give him a TV show. See, that's action. original. See, see that's, to- exactly. that's totally original. That is way totally original. It, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Instead of taking something like the boys what Homelander, Superman, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Omni-Man and Invincible, Superman, right. they have all these different versions of like Superman. Oh, they're going to charge Superman evil. Even my Brightburn. Uh, right, right. 2019, that movie Brightburn, that was Superman come to Earth as evil. Okay, mm-hmm. so all they're doing is taking these characters that we already know and love. I'm using Superman because he is like almost the most popular one yep. that people are yep. doing this to. And right. just, oh, we're going to change him. We're going to make him evil. But how many different evil versions of Superman do we need? Right. What's going on, Axel? How are you? Hey, Axel, getting- my, my brother, how are you doing? See you in a couple weeks. Um, but that's what I'm saying. So they're taking these the, the, the characters, and maybe that's what's happening with the overload. Oh my God, it's another Superman, but now this time he's evil. Oh, this time right. he's he's this. Oh, this time right. he's that. Right. So I think that's no, what part of the yeah. problem is. Whereas the old guard, that totally original, that blew was everybody awesome. away. Yes, that was awesome. Blew everybody away. Uh, the warrior nun, another original right. thing. Yep. Here you go. True. So you're true. not. I, I don't think you're but that, getting. But, though, but both those though. But Lewis, both those are not Cape and Cowell. They're not superheroes. Oh, I, they're, they're, yep, that's no, a big I difference that. too. That's yep, a big no, difference. I, I, I get that. But I think your overload that you're getting is overload of seeing the same character rehashed, renamed, so, repackaged. So and are what you, a new so, Right. So you. I'm all right. So you put a twist on this before we take a yeah. quick break uh, to all get right. in the Hasbro minute. So. We're uh, let me rephrase it then. We're getting cape and cowl fatigue. We're not getting comic book creator fatigue. There you go. There you Does go. Does that Perfect. make sense? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. See, yeah, definitely. Uh, absolutely. So that's the, that's the thing because cowl. as you said, uh, the Warrior Nun was a great and it was it wasn't a big budget. It had the indie feel, but it was a great storyline, original as hell. Uh Well, let's all right. Well, really quick before we get to Hasbro minute cuz I know they're important, yeah. we need to do this. But what yeah. about Hellstrom. Hellstrom was fantastic. I loved yeah. it. Kept Rose's attention. Hulu canceled it. Why? Hulu seems to cancel it all their a... Marvel. Hulu seems to cancel all their Marvel I, I properties. I don't know why. And now, here's the thing with Hellstrom. Is it was it a little bit like Constantine? Yes, but yeah. it was a little bit also different. But, yeah, but they canceled cool. Constantine too, I, though. <laughs> I, I, I I get that. I, I get that. But what I'm saying. Yeah. It yeah. was a new character. Is there, yes, it's from the Marvel Universe. It is from the MCU. Yeah. But I think the independents that aren't carbon copies, you know, you make a copy, you make a copy, and the copy gets a little blurry, gets a little blurry, right. gets a little blurry. That's what's happening. So you're right. getting Cape and Cow fatigue over seeing how many different versions of, of the Superman can yeah. we see. Right. That's, of what, that's what's yeah. happening to you. 
All right. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, one of the downsides of uh, one of the actually, I shouldn't say downsides. One of the sad things for me was uh, when Outcast came out. Uh, that's a Robert Kirkman property as well. Years ago, I Max loved that comic it. book series. And I love that series, and it just died. It, I was so distraught because I love that take. Again, supernatural, uh, but a different take, an original. And I'm like, maybe he should have waited. What if he brought it on a streaming service instead of Cinemax? What if he brought it to Netflix or Amazon Prime if it would have done better? Maybe if he waited three more years to put it out or four more years to put it out, maybe it would have done much better because I love that series. I thought it was great. Uh, another one that I would love to see is uh, Scott Snyder's Witches. Another great, ooh, awesome, ooh. original yes. story. Totally original. And Supernatural is all what it's about right now. It's, it's, I, that would be awesome if he could get that. But again, that's a DC property, so who knows how that works. So, But uh, uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit of G.I. Joe. Go Joe. Yes, G.I. Joe is back in the movie news. We're going to be doing uh, Flea Market Finds. And we're also going to be doing the Friday Five. That's right. Brought to you by Alternate Universe uh, and uh, all that and more when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Grab your drinks. I said don't go anywhere. All right. I said it. I mean it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Introducing Body Armor Edge. Sports hydration with a boost of caffeine. Kyler Murray drops back. Looks downfield. Here comes the blitz. Murray finds an opening. With 100 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of electrolytes, there's no better way for Kyler Murray to get his edge. It's more than a sports drink. It's body armor. Edge. I'm Batman. Welcome back to the Friday Night Edition of Today with DW. It's the pop culture edition with my good friend, Mr. Lewis Perry from the Anger Geek Show. What's going on? And we are going to do thank you for Hasbro for being one of our sponsors. And we uh, try to do a Hasbro minute and give you uh, some information on some of their new toys and products that are coming out. But uh, just as of two days ago, and well, more so, yeah, yesterday and today, some major news came out. Uh, I didn't even know, really know about this. And I'm shocked because I usually do try to stay up on, on the movie news. And maybe because the last G.I. Joe movies were so wah, wah. Um, I was not in the, uh, in the, yeah, I was not, uh, do you know what's number one on Netflix though, Lewis? <laughs> the last, uh, uh, my the Netflix or your, ne uh, uh, my Netflix or your Netflix? <laughs> well, on my Netflix, on my uh, Netflix, G no, I haven't been your house, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, G.I. Joe, know. the 20, the 20, the 2013 G.I. Joe is number one right now. So I'm assuming. Why? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming though, Lewis, it's because of this news. I, I'm assuming because this news came out two days ago or yesterday and today. So we're going to pop that right up there. Now, you might be familiar who this person is. This is for me as a kid. This was the first G.I. Joe figure that I bought as a kid. Uh, I just I thought he was the coolest of out of all the Joes. I'm, I'm every I, I know. Don't yell at me. I'm sure you have your favorites, but my favorite well, is Snake Eyes. Uh, I thought he was great. Um, news came out yesterday that there will be a new G.I. Joe film, uh, Snake Eyes First Look. It's Henry Golden as the actor, and he isn't your average Joe, and it will be G.I. Joe Origins, which is Snake Eyes. Now, what well, is, do you think well, – go ahead. Excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt. I just got a quick question. Yeah. G.I. Joe Volume 1, which was the uh, Marvel when they got the property, they yeah. did one – issue of snake eyes kind of like the nick fury done by Starenko yeah. with no dialogue yeah wouldn't that yeah. be cool if this movie yeah. was just like that with no dialogue from well, I mean, just, this well oh my god I, it'll blow people's <laughs> minds <laughs> so i i will be touching a little bit on that because i just say that this in the in the article that i got from uh e uh it's hard to make a large-scale summer action movie when your main character doesn't speak Snake Eyes, the code name for the beloved G.I. Joe character, is a mass living weapon with unparalleled skill in welding the katana blade and much more. But words, not so much. Uh, they have been very mythologies in the Joe verse surrounding why this warrior remains in silence. But the creators of the franchise's next big feature length movie found an alternative solution. 
As shown in E's exclusive first look photos, which you can find all over the place on the internet, uh, Henry Golden stars as the lead of Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origin, which delves into the beginnings of the mysterious figure. It was one of the reasons why we picked the backstory. Uh, how did he become Snake Eyes? And this is coming from the producer Lorenzo uh, Di Berventa. And he says it, it allows him to talk, which is very helpful. So to give you an idea, the character does not does, is not born mute. Uh, there's different theories of what it was. We've heard that his face was uh, very uh, disfigured and he uh, facial uh, facial construction or uh, facial uh, reconstructive surgery was made, but his vocal cords were severely hurt. And we don't know if it was a fire per se, or if it was a battle. Uh, it could have been, there's numerous stories or nothing's really canon with the snake eyes. One creator did an origin story. Another creator said, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, shadow storm or, you know, so we're going to well, storm shadow, excuse me. Um, we're going to have to see how that's going to pan out in this one. It's also, well, I think I figured see. it out. I think yeah, I figured well. it out really quick by looking at this picture. Hold on. You remember at the end of Aquaman, when the black Manta blew up, there you go, because he looks just like Black Manta, but a different helmet. <laughs> no, come on, you can't compare. That's kidding. pears and apples. That's pears. And I'm, apples. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He looks awesome. I, I can't yeah, wait to see. So the, it's also beneficial see, to see, see gold, uh, see golden outside the Snake Eyes helmet, which is the first time ever in a GI Joe movie that we see Snake Eyes remove his helmet. So that's going to be pretty cool. That's really going to be pretty cool to see that. Um, but well, do you think the fans will, the hardcore fans, do you think they're the hardcore gonna fans that? will probably be like, no, it's the, the, it ruins okay. the mystique. Okay, because the same the thing, I mean, with, Stall with Stallone, when he was dread, no, mind you, that movie was blah. Right. Yeah. Um, when he took off his helmet, blah, ah, dread does not yeah. remove his helmet. And even well, Stallone had a problem with removing the helmet. But well, when you when you pay an actor that much money, you better see his face. <laughs> well, yeah, but he is. A, I mean, you go back when that movie came out, when Judge Red came out, Stallone yeah. wanted the green boots and yeah. he wanted to keep the helmet on. Yes. And at least Carl Urban, he he stuck to his guns. Like, I ain't removing this helmet. No, um, no, I hear you. Do you think that the fans are going to be like, that's not my snake eyes? Yeah, you know, well, those, you know I what, sound though, like because. One of these well, I look at it this way. If it's going to be a true origin story, he was somebody before he was Snake Eyes. So he true, didn't true. always have the uniform. So there you go. And if yeah, you look okay. online, the posters out there, uh, he's in his uniform. His back is facing this, facing the viewer, and the helmet is in his hand. So he has, you know, uh, let's see. We'll go into, uh, let's, we'll go into the, well, we're going to show yeah, you. I have anyway. a lot of <laughs> questions. I, I I, yes, I have a lot of questions about this. Are they going to get into his relationship with Scarlet? Uh, he and well, Scarlet. Let me, were, let me, let me. Friends. I will, were... I will, I will, I will answer some of those for you in two seconds. I'll answer some of those questions for you. Okay. Uh, it's also beneficial to see Golden outside the Snake Eyes helmet, which is typically always fixed on the character's head. Always, it really is. You even in the comics, I don't think we've ever seen him uh, take his helmet off. Uh, but you just don't hide the silver screen good looks of the thirty-four year old uh, Asian. So what do you know? Uh, he, I, I wanted to see something different, and I wanted to to look different to feel and feel different. Golding says to be able to launch a franchise like that, it was just too good to be true, and especially with a character like Snake Eyes, about whom a lot of people don't know too much about they know him as this insane operator that competes or completes missions in his absolute weapon but who's the guy behind the mask now storm shadow will be in the movie i there's a little uh if you didn't uh, read the imdb no spoilers and shouldn't be a spoilers at this point but storm shadow and snake guys their brotherhood relationship is one of the most famous in the gi joe lore uh, they have such an interesting forever wavering relationship of hate and love they love each other uh, love each other as brothers because they've been through the same thing after saving the uh the asherakage heir apparent snake snake is taken to japan to train and really bring out the true es essence of who he is now in one of the gi joe movies i do believe there was some history with the uh, uh storm shadow snake eyes showing Two. him that uh, storm shadow yeah. blames snake eyes supposedly for their master's death um uh, and, and makes it and in that movie uh his throat is cut. His face is not disfigured. It's his throat that's cut. Throat. Um, and he thinks that he is dead. Um, so we'll see what's going on, Mr. Joe. How are you, sir? Um, Hello, Mr. Goulart. So to give you an idea, uh, 
basic premise supposedly is facing three trials in order to be inducted into the clan. We also see Snake cross paths with Akao, played by Harko Abbey, Disney, Disney's live action Corilla, whom a Golden Call is phenomenal in this film and will really pop. He's a burden man when the movie begins, and in the process, he lifts some of the burden. A lot of it is internal search to find the balance in his life. That's a that's the gravity of the movie. So we're going to already assume that there's going to be present and flashbacks, present and past, present and past, present and past. Yeah. So to answer your question, to give you an idea, the Baroness is in this movie. Scarlet is in this movie. So we are going to see the relationship right. with right. that. There is the hard master, the blind master, Kenta, Akeo, and the father, and uh, Augustine Hama, and those are the, your main characters right there. Um, okay, I my, have one other go ahead. one other question. One other question. Yeah, in the comic books, Marvel Comics. Yeah, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow both came from the Hand. We yeah. all know where the Hand comes from. Are they? Do they have the property mm. rights to do this? Are they going to change it? It, it? Oh my God! Just, uh, just imagine your people's I, heads. This exploding. is not a Marvel. This is not a Marvel or Disney oh, property. I, so I doubt. I, that. I get it. I, I get that. But just imagine people's heads exploding if they did that. You know, that would be pretty cool. That would be with pretty that cool. origin of them being from the hand. Just right. Well, oh my God! Because it's not a Marvel property anymore. I, I, I know. Yeah. I, I know. And they, I'm excited. They I'm excited for this too. I'm, I'm totally excited for this. I think it's going to be great to give you an idea. My thing is, is he going to, is he going to be as good? And I've never seen this actor. Obviously he's doing his own martial arts and his stunts. Is he going to be able to keep up with Ray Park? Uh, I think so. Original? I, 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 yeah, I, I think so. I think he's going to put a new twist on it. I think he's going to yeah. be more acrobatic, more into the ninjutsu type thing. Um, Ray Park is fantastic. Okay, okay. Yeah. As an as an actor, as a martial artist, you know, oh, we all know Ray Park as Toad in the X. Yeah, and of course, Snake Eyes. You were uh, Snake yes. Eyes in GI Joe One and GI yeah. Joe Two Retaliation. I Darth Maul was I, great as Darth Maul. Yes, that's what I said. I said Darth Maul. Um, I think Golden is going to be take put a new twist on it. He's going to break the barrier just by those pictures um you're you're talking about a dude that trained forever longer than ray mm -hmm. park I'm i sure, ray sure. parks excuse me i i am i, th I think we're, we're going to see the snake eyes that we all want to see mm -hmm. we're going to see the snake so. eyes from all the different comics not just the marvel comics uh, what is it boom or die uh, boom we're going to I see that gi joe property we're we're going to see the gi joe from the cartoon the stuff is it boom now or is it dynamite now I can't. I can't remember. I haven't picked up a GI Joe comic book yeah. since Marvel, so I don't I think know. The last one um, that I picked up was a couple of them because of Larry Hama that I had him sign. I think it was the one with Snake Eyes on the cover. So, but okay. yeah, so yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I haven't picked up. Here's a little tidbit too about GI Joe, and I like to throw this out there. And I yeah, actually, well, one of my conversations with Jim Shooter, um, and I, that you can find that video um, yeah. on, online. Did you know that Rocky Balboa was a part of GI Joe? No, I didn't know that part. I knew, oh, yes. um, I knew, uh, so what's it, uh, what's his name from wrestling? Sergeant was Slaughter there. is, Star yeah, Sergeant yeah. Slaughter is, and that first appearance of Sergeant Slaughter is hot. That is something that you need to find at flea market. But yeah, nice. Rocky Balboa was actually wrote into GI Joe. Then they had a backtrack a one shot? and pull him out. Oh, no, they, didn't, they never did it? No, he is in a GI, this is GI Joe. Uh, it, it is a yearbook and Rocky's oh, no pictures shit. there. Then they had to call the books back. It's it's, it's wicked crazy. Um, I'll see. I'll, I'll dig up the interview and post it. Are there other are there any were there any books that were sold before they pulled them back? Yeah. Ooh, we got to find that, yep. Lewis. And there's Rockies like this. And there's a drawing of, of Rocky Balboa as a part Ooh. of GI Joe, and then they had to scramble it. We yes, got we got to we got to find that. Uh, we could definitely got to find that. Uh, as we're winding down the episode, we might not be able to get in the flea market fines because we were talking well, I got so some much good about stuff right here, know, really quick. Well, I I know you got to eat, and but we have to do we yeah, have to I do, do got to eat. I know, but we have the Friday Five that is more important. Friday than Five, flea yes, market. yeah, because I got to make five. an announcement about the Friday Five. Yes. So go, go ahead. The Friday, Friday five. five. It is now the Friday Five, brought to you by Alternate Universe Comics. There you have it. New Haven, Milford. Check out the screen right there. Both great locations. I have yet to get to either one of them. We're hoping that um, 
Eric and Lewis will come up to the studio soon. I got new toys for them to play with. They can play with shields. They can play with the Infinity Gauntlets, even though Lewis has those. I don't think Eric has these. I, I don't even think Eric has a shield. <coughs> oh, nice. Nice. The Punisher. Nice. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I, this, Very cool. This is awesome. I love this. I want so to do Friday a pod with it on, but I, the headset. I got to get a different type of headset. So, so the Friday sure. Five brought to you by Alternate Universe. Check them out. Uh, they just got a brand new Instagram page. And let me put that back up there. They're also on Facebook. Uh, let me turn that banner off so you guys can actually read that. Uh, yeah, so new, old comic books, collectibles, we, you name it, they got it. Visit their Facebook page at facebook.com, Alternate Universe. Uh Universe ECT and Alter Universe ECT on Instagram, which is a brand new account for them. So check them out. Give them some love. Tell them Lewis and I sent you. And Eric, you'll probably end up seeing Eric there because he is the man. We love him. So the Friday Five is our five picks that Eric picks of comics that came out this Wednesday. That is something that you should be interested in, whether it's your first time reading the series or jumping into the series or long, long standing. So we're going to jump right off the bat is Justice League Last Ride. Now, I, now that I, I haven't been reading comics for a while now, I've been doing the, kind of the same thing with Lewis uh, where I'm doing some old issues, just collecting some of the older issues and whatnot. Um, but doing these Friday Fives now, the I should call them the Friday Fantastic Five. Ooh, yeah, there you go. The Fred, <laughs> We'll do a Fantastic Four ripoff of a logo. <laughs> the Friday Fantastic Five. Yeah, it will do uh, I'm getting I'm getting excited again while we're reading these descriptions that Eric sends me and his picks that I'm thinking I might have to get back into the books. But anyway, Justice League last ride number one. Perfect time to jump on point. Once the most powerful group in the world, the Justice League was destroyed by tragedy in time, disbanding under a veil of mistrust and anger. Hmm. Has not happened before, I think. I think yes, I think that Babylon Tower of Babylon. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god. Wasn't wasn't right. that the Grant Morrison run? I think that was the Grant Morrison yes. run. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's the Tower of Babylon. Yes. That one of the, the whole yes. anyway. We're full, anyway, a great if you want a, a pick up every issue of the Grant Morrison run of Justice League, probably one of the best runs. I'm going to call it right out there in comic book history. I don't care. You, you can fight me. I'm saying that right now that 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 line with Grant Morrison was probably one of the best lines of comic, especially with the justice league in, in comic mm -hmm. book history. But anyway, we're focusing on this now, now on the eve of the universe's greatest, greatest murder trial, the league must come together one last time, but can Superman and Batman bury the past before the cosmos greatest villains bury them. Learn a shocking truth in this new digital first adventure by writer Chip Zordarsky and artist Miguel. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to pronounce that name because that's not going to happen. So definitely check them out. Now you already know that this must be something held into the future where Batman and Superman, we have already known that in some of the other re uh, renditions, they don't see eye to eye. You know, Dark Knight Returns, uh, Red Sun, you know, they, they don't always see eye to eye, you know, so... Uh, definitely worth checking out. And again, it's a number one. This isn't a jump into the middle of the series. Be on the ground floor and get this now. Next up, we're doing from Image Comics, mm. Time Before mm. Time. Oh, oh, O'Halloran, not our friend O'Halloran, not the Brian O'Halloran. That, that would be pretty cool if he did write a comic book. Uh, <laughs> but the year is 2140, and to escape a world with no future, Many turn to the syndicate, a criminal organization who, for the right price, will smuggle you back in time to a better life. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is kind of cool. After working for the syndicate for years, Taatso and Oscar decide to steal one of their boss's time machines, but soon find that the one thing you can't run from is your past. Now, time also noted time before time is a brand new ongoing series where writer artist Declan Shevley. Uh, joins forces with the right in blood team of Rory McDonoughville and Joe Palmer. This is awesome. This again is a number one issue again, perfect jumping on point. And I got to tell you, you know, when we talked about superhero fatigue, what's going on, Jabo uh, superhero fatigue. Go. If you have Cape and cowl fatigue, check out image, check out dynamite, check out boom. Those are the ones that are going to give you the non super now granted invincible superhero but that's still not, it is kind of Cape and it is Cape and Kyle's, but it, a little bit of a different twist image always puts out some great stuff. Uh, and we're going to see some more original stuff. We're going to see some stuff coming out from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo as well. Non Batman, non witches. We're going to see some more of that. And we'll keep you up to date on that. We're going to go right into a uh, number three is the X Corp. 
This is Marvel again. Eric is pulling out the number ones on this on this great uh, great uh, Fantastic Five or fr Friday the Friday Fantastic Friday the, Wow the Fantastic Five Friday Fantastic Five We'll figure it out the FFF We're gonna call it the FFF uh, X Corp number one obviously from Marvel. Karoka is for closers. Now, if you don't know the history of Karoka, that is in a living island. We, I don't think we've seen that. Uh, in well, I know they rebrought them back a few years ago, but Karoka was back in the seventies and eighties, wasn't it? Croatia. Living island, yeah. Karosha mm -hmm. is it Karosha? I don't know. It's, it's Karoka. K R A K O A. Well, it doesn't doesn't read like Croatia. It's K R A. I can't even say it now because of you. <laughs> the deals have been made. You, I, yeah. Caraca. I'm just going to call it Caraca. Uh, mutant oh, kind is <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> mutant, kind is, mutant kind is safe on Caraca. Uh, as the reign of X continues, well, what are the wants of the mutants who have everything? Leading the charge is X Corporation, headed by X CEOs Monet St. Croix. You should know who that is. Warren Wor Worthington. Come on. It's the angel. In a angel. duel of cut cutthroat and ruthless in the boardroom as they are on a battlefield, but court X Corp needs more than just to its figureheads as Monet sets out to staff their team with some of the brightest and most deviant minds in mutant kind. Warren finds himself in a tense meeting with one of Croatia's first allies who wants to know the truth uh, on angels wings. Will X Corp crash or soar? Now it's pretty cool to see that um, Warren and, and, and uh, Monet never used their riches or their business wealth really much in the past in the X books. He was pretty much just an angel. I mean, obviously if you, if you uh, watched the, or read the apocalypse war, uh, he, obviously he became Archangel, uh, became one of the four horsemen, um, but he Arcane. never used the business side of his, of his wealth or his sense to fund, which they're doing right now. Again, an interesting take a mutant who's rich and is fine funding a corporate mutant team. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah very, very cool. All right. Next up is the. This is from Dark Horse, another great indie comic. If you are like we said, a cape and cowl of fatigue, the House of Lost Horizons, a Sarah Gel Jewel or Sarah Jewel mystery. Uh, I love the art already. It's kind of uh, it reminds me of something else. Uh, it reminds me of Saga's artwork a little bit from Image. Yeah, back a little in the bit. Day. Uh, locked room. Uh, a locked room murder mystery puzzles paranormal detective Sarah Jewel and her associate Marie Trez when. Uh, on a weekend trip on a private island off the coast of Washington goes astray trapped by a storm and surrounded by mirrored subjects or suspects, excuse me, who have gathered for an auction of, of occult items. The intrepid duo must unravel the supernatural mysteries surrounding the guests in hopes of uncovering the murderer. But all in the while bodies keep piling up. And at that moment, Sarah or Marie uh, Trey's could be next. Mike Magniola. Who's, who's that? That's Hellboy, baby. Hellboy. That's why I know that artwork. <laughs> That's why I'm familiar with that. And Chris Robinson, Return to the World of Hellboy, accompanied by artist Leia DeLucha, 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 and colorist Michelle Madison. Very, very Hellboy-esque, very Saga-esque. Mm -hmm. Investigator Sarah Jewell uh, gets her own series in a murder mystery with an occult twist. Now, she's from Rise of the Black Frame, Witchfinder, The Reign of Darkness. So now she's getting her own series. Again, awesome. I think this was this is going to be a great series. Again, this is a one of five. It's a limited edition or limited series, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's go cool. right into the next and last one, I believe. Now we did say if you uh, have cape and cowl, if you have cape and cowl fatigue, but again, who's upset with the Batman? I mean, but again, this is something a little bit different. Again, uh, right it right on the right in the images. There's a wanted poster. Batman is wanted. So is Nightwing. Future State Gotham, number one. Again, picking these number ones. Get on them while you can. The event that was a DC that was DC Future State continues in its ongoing title starring the Bat Family, beginning with the epic story, Hunt the Batman. Again. Disaster, uh, yeah, right. A disaster strikes Gotham City, and all evidence points again. to the next. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> to the next Batman. Again, a Red Hood must choose justice again over his family and allies when the corrupt magistrate enlists him to bring in the new Batman, dead or alive. Not again. Uh, featuring the entire <laughs> cast from the popular Future State Batman titles, this new series kicks off the next chapter in the Forbidden World of Tomorrow and does so in a brilliant uh, monochromatic storytelling. This black and white series will showcase the bur brutal world that's around the future or around the corner of the Future State Gotham. I think this is pretty cool. Uh, yes, it might be somewhat repetitive, but again, it's a different take. We'll you see. said again. 
Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> you can find all these at more alternate universe at their two locations. One at the New Haven, New Haven, Connecticut at 1181 Chapel Street. Give them a call at 203-562-0108. When you call them, ask for Eric and tell them that Lewis and DW sent you. Uh, you can also email them at uh, altun96 at al.com. Their other store is Milford, Connecticut, which is 3098 Bridgeport Avenue, 203-876-8539. And, it's and the AL, home of the Angry Geeks. And Yes, it is. And it's also uh, email at altun05 at al.com. Make sure you find them on Facebook and their brand new, um, their brand new uh, Instagram account, Alternate Universe Inc. CT. CT check them out uh and before we go because lewis has got to eat he's got some big mo more news about what's yes. going on with the angry geeks and alternate universe yep. may 22nd i am going to be there live hopefully jamie can come too we're going to be there with broadcasting live there is going to be a contest if you go to the alternate universe facebook page or instagram page enter the contest on that day the angry geeks will be announcing the winner of that contest, you know, of share, like, give away. It's free stuff and it's free to enter. Just go to the Instagram page, follow the instructions and enter that contest. But wait, there's more. If you guys were following my Facebook page or the Angry Geeks page, you see that Jamie and I are going to make a major announcement. That major announcement that's going to rock the world. Okay, now, you know. I do know. A lot of other people in the know. But we're going to make that announcement. That is just going to shake the foundation live from Alternate Universe on May 22nd. We're going to start streaming at 1 p.m. Why don't you see if you can come down and hang out with us? 1 p.m. Everybody, come and check it out. If you can't check it out, you're going to be online. Tune in to the Alternate Universe Facebook page, Angry Geeks Facebook page, Earplug Podcast Facebook page, of course, the YouTube channels. And my own personal and Jamie's personal Facebook page. We're going to be streaming there. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have a blast. We're going to make our special announcement. But most importantly, go to the Instagram page of Ultimate Universe CT. Go to the Facebook page and enter that contest and see what you can win. Do it now because Lewis said so. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's everybody, the thank bottom you so line. Much. <laughs> <laughs> that's the bottom line because I said so. Um, anyway, uh, I want to thank our sponsors for tonight. Obviously, Body Armor, drinkbodyarmor.com. Visit their website for a location near you. Make sure to check out their brand new energy drink, Body Armor Edge. I want to thank uh, Adventure Family Fun Center. They have always been great with us. They I are now open in. They are, yeah, you got to go up there when we're ready. Yep. Uh, yep. They are, are they're open inside and out. You can uh, visit their website, adventurefamilyfun.com for hours. And if you need to contact them, uh, obviously they are still uh, doing masks and uh, six feet distance and it's by reservations only. Uh, it's also, oh, you know what? That's what I didn't do today. I didn't put up our spot. I, there you go. There, there we go. Uh, the Shirt Factory, visit shirtfactorygf.com. Amazing shops, eateries. And they're starting May 22nd is the, one of the biggest food truck corrals in upstate New York. Every Thursday from four to eight, they're going to be there every Thursday. They're now back open outside of all the food trucks. There will be live music. Not sure yet about bounce houses and face painting because I think you have, still have to be six feet difference with them. And you have to wear masks while you're walking. As long as you're sitting and eating, you don't have to wear a mask. But we'll keep you more up to date with that. And obviously Hasbro, Hasbro Minute. To make sure we're we're already on board with the GI Joes, the GI Joe movie. I think it's going to be it could be one of the best ones they've ever done. We'll see what happens. Uh, any last words, Lewis, before we let everybody go to enjoy their evening? Stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great weekend. See you next see Tuesday. This has been an Earplug Podcast presentation. Found on EarplugPodcast.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, and wherever your favorite podcasts are found.